Welcome back to Talk Horror to Me, the only movie review horror podcast that loves our old people. Grandma, don't kill me. With that being said, before we bring on Ashley and Carly, let's see what we're talking about tonight. Tonight, we look at Old People, a 2022 German horror film directed by Andy Fetzer, who also wrote the screenplay. The film premiered at Fantasy Film Fest on September 8th, 2022, and released on Netflix on October 7th, 2022. Old People centers on a woman traveling home with her two kids for her sister's wedding, but finds herself defending her family against the aged on a killing spree during a violent thunderstorm. Oh, man, I love this movie. Oh, I I picked this. I saw it back in 2022, and I said, hey, why not? It's still on Netflix because my other 12 choices you have to pay for. (laughs) So I was like, what can we all get a hold of and be able to watch with one of our streaming services? And this was it. Um, I loved watching it, but I want to find out from y'all what you think. So Miss Great House, tell me a story. I loved it. This was a good film. And um, this is uh, dubbed. And there was maybe a few moments where it's like a line was said that it was lost in translation, maybe. But not very many at all. Like, not enough that it's going to take you out of the story and what's going on. Like, this was actually one of those movies that my husband put on and just went and did his own thing. But then he came back and sat down and, like, finished watching the movie with me. So, it is good. I liked it. Can't wait to talk more about it. Carly? Mm -hmm. Well, um, as I was telling Chuck, it, it brought back a lot of memories for me. Um, my dad being in a nursing home and seeing how helpless a lot of them were. And um, when these characters go to pick up the grandfather from the nursing home, ah, it just broke my heart. It absolutely broke my heart. And I, I kind of empathize with them, you know, they're forgotten. They're not taken care of. And, Whew, yeah, so I emphasize, em, em, yeah, I was like, go killers. <laughs> oh, killers. Woo. I mean, I get it because mm-hmm. obviously the old people are not to blame in this case. I totally get that. At the very beginning, we get that uh, lore about, you know, when the, the most frail of the community will be embodied by a vengeful spirit and, you know, wreak havoc on everyone. Um, you know, they set that up in the lore and then they set it up in the opening scene. And we knew that nurse didn't have nothing to do with it. That nurse didn't deserve to get an oxygen thing in the face, mm-hmm. um, but she did. So that just shows, as Carly and I were talking backstage, it was fairly indiscriminate about who deserved to get justice met out. Um, and with that, it just means that there's nobody who's safe. Doesn't matter if you were. At blame, not at blame. You're a shitty orderly, uh, a neglectful nurse, um, kids who abandoned you to this old folks home, which, God by God, if that's what old folks homes look like in Germany, you know, it makes it makes American, (laughs) you know, retirement and uh, assisted living look fantastic in comparison. So it was pretty dark and dire for what these people had to deal with. So uh, knowing you, Ashley, who worked elder care, mm-hmm. I really want your like personal take uh, from that angle. Personal take. I'm with Carly on this one. I was like team old people. Like, get them. <laughs> yes. Because... You have to, like, you have to understand, we all, when we're super young, we look at old people like they're just so stupid, they're just so out of touch, they don't understand anything, they can't even work a smartphone, and that's, like, so not true. It's a horrible stereotype to have, one that you're going to have to live through if we are lucky enough to make it to that age. So, Mm -hmm. it's just wild. Like, some of my best friends are old people, you know what I mean? Like... (laughs) That's who I'm around the most. So it was touching. Like like Carly said, it does pull at your heartstrings because you see so many elderly people who are just forgotten about and pushed to the side by society. Like they're just a nuisance to deal with. Yeah. And I could touch on so much more of this from like working 
around so many different elderly people, but this is a good movie. I think everyone should watch it. I think that it would put a lot of things into perspective and just be lucky that curses like that don't exist because as a society, we're we're not nice. (laughs) No, no, we are not. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. I will say that they, the way they filmed this, uh, number one, uh, you know, everything was like that hoarder mentality of that old person kind of living in their own filth with mm-hmm. some visiting nurse that was really not all that interested. You know, they were interested that they were okay, the old person, but they were talking on the phone. Oh, I got to go in. I got to I got to take care of this guy. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I mean, she was not um, connected to no. the job. Other than like, this is a job I have. So when you saw how he lived, you saw all the stuff stacked up everywhere, whether it was memorable or just hoarding, you know, it, it wasn't a way that people should live. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. it all goes down, and I, I do want to say this, this like really caught me this time around. When the guy's like screaming out the window and you start panning out to the rest of the, the area and you see the, that triple flash. <laughs> Um, Shit, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's scary, right? So when you see that triple that flash un- of gunshots, <laughs> I thought it was like, oh my god, I didn't even, I saw all the fires, but I never saw the triple gunshots in that one apartment. The yeah. Gun flashes. So I mean, it, they really just set it up like really seamlessly. And then all of a sudden it gets very bright and warm. And I just the beautiful warm colors, and you're going through the house and all these dust particles are just kind of drifting around making it very fantiful and loving and and everything was just perfect and promoted perfectly Mm -hmm. and then uh i just love it goes from there to everything that is involving old people dark dingy grayscale uh yeah just i think the cinematographer that's really set up that that want for something better for the old people oh yeah they did a it's a beautifully filmed movie like even the the gruesome scenes Mm. is just Mm -hmm. so well done and there's some scenes that it leaves it to your imagination which i really did enjoy because there's a lot of like grotesque things that are happening in this film so it was good that they left some things to the imagination and didn't just try to run full force with the gore factor Right, right. Was it drag? Was it uh, Sam Raimi's "Drag Me to Hell," where the the gypsies on top of the girl and like she, she just vomits all over her? Mm-hmm. And, and we got some of that in this film, where the old person is just like blah, slobbering no. out and and just goop and grossness yeah. and like some something straight on. And like you said, some of it was off camera. Like we mm-hmm. never saw the wedding dress and how it ended up where it ended up. But we know yeah. something bad happened. Yeah. And, yeah. and just like the, the the visuals were so striking in so many ways. Uh, but I have my problems. <laughs> and I don't, you know, I have my problems. And, you know, Judy and I were watching it tonight. And she thought that it, was, it had a lot of the tropes. A lot yeah. of the, like, yeah. we're going to quietly run through the house to find our son. And then all of a sudden we, we just abandon everybody to go find the son and leave everything wide open. Question. Like the guy, the main guy, the main old man baddie. Yeah. So let's call him the the, the, the big bad, and then the one woman in the wedding dress, like the female bad. Mm-hmm. Um, he lets like two people into the house, but yet we never see them again. Did we not? So we did not. And again, I watched it again. It was like they he like beckons people in, and they crawl in and disappear in front of the yeah. nurse. And then all of a sudden, they're all locked in the house. He's chained to the, or taped to the stove, and nobody ever comes in to free him. So what happened to those two people? See, I thought one of those was the old man who fell and said, please help me. And then the Uh, dad was, yeah, and then the dad was just like, nah, bro. (laughs) And then five minutes later was like, we've never done anything to you. <laughs> but you kind of did, just like okay. All minutes. right, so I'll give you one of the three then, because yes, yeah, he did end one. up walking around with his uh, Bible in hand, looking for Anna. Very sad. You're you're right. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, but I did. I, I wonder did. if that was like a director's cut or like they, it might have you know been. I mean? It seems like some other little scenes were like they didn't make sense or like how, mm-hmm. how why is he still 
taped to the thing if people were inside, but you had to wait for them to mm -hmm. come banging through the doors and the wedding dress lady comes in and takes care of bees um, Yeah. But yeah, I just, it was creepy. It was like a virus movie. It was a zombie mm -hmm. movie. It was like The Fog, John Carpenter's The Fog. I mean, mm -hmm. it had this weird vibe that kind of covers so much ground uh, without it being infectious. No, Sorry. and then at the same time, it's so unique, and I've not seen a movie do something like this. Yeah. So it was cool. Yeah. You had all these other tropes and different plot points that you see in different genres, or horror genres, but this was its own thing. Agreed. Carly, what else you got for us? Oh, you know what, Carly, before you get started, because I know you want to talk about this, we really want to talk about our favorite kills, uh, so... Let's start with you. You can you can say what you're going to say, and then let's get right into killing. Like, well, it's that's not right. it, <laughs> murder baby. But um, the most satisfying kill to me, um, death to me, was Kim, because that bitch. Yep. Oh, oh man. I hated her. I hated her <laughs> with a burning, fiery passion. I just, you know, from the, the dance scene on. Is, yeah. Yes, it, I'm actually kind of from the nursing home on for me because it's almost like she was like, yeah, well, yeah, well, I'm not going to really worry about it. So, you know, when she took a header out of that window, yes, <laughs> which was really her only redeeming thing she did yes. the entire film. Um, but I, I have to say something about that, which is at the beginning, what we're tr they're trying to find Ike. Uh, to pick him up for the mm -hmm. reception and the one the one nurse is trying to pick up the lady from the shower who had right. fallen or slipped and then uh kim comes out of the offer office and says oh yeah oh is you, I'm just like, are you busy he's like oh no 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 i was like really you got like dozens upon dozens of people in their own filth standing in underwear mm -hmm. in a hallway with one other nurse trying to take care of the lady who fell and you're like oh i'm fine we're all good plenty of time so I did like her from the mm -hmm. jump. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I liked her when she we met her with Lucas, but that's about all I liked her as. But Ashley, tell me what, uh, I don't know, but wh wh who you want to get killed? What was my favorite kill? Yeah. So my favorite, my favorite kill was definitely my appetite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it died when the old, the, the, <laughs> The big bad man was eating the cookies or whatever, and like, then it was, I think it was just cake like or something, yeah, something. Of, uh, and I was just yeah. like, "Chuck, <laughs> why did <laughs> you do this to me?" <laughs> oh, and that was horrible. before everything went wrong. Yeah, that was just his normal eating habits. Yeah, I think. So that, I think my yeah. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say that that has to be my favorite kill. <laughs> okay. I mean, I think for me, I mean, there's so many. I mean, actually, there's not that many kills. You have a, the massacre on the roadside, which is almost like anticlimactic. Um, mm -hmm. I will say that for me, the other than Kim, because she deserved it, absolutely. Okay. I think the one who deserved it the most was that asshole of an orderly who would not let yeah. them listen to the reception music. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, that dude just set me on fire i've actually yeah. like witnessed something similar to that like where someone has just been super snarky and rude and it's like what is the purpose yeah. what, what are you yeah. trying to accomplish with that like you shouldn't me. be in the field if, no. if, if that's your way of working you should not be doing that kind of work right. No, Absolutely no, not, not not at all. If you find yourself that completely jaded, then maybe it's time that you uh, spread your little wings and find a new job. You know? Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably was the point is that we had to have that character, mm -hmm. of course, to really set down, a, really super, super, super reinforce the premise of this film of why this happens. Um, I did love the idea that this was not localized, that the thing that happens in the city is happening pretty much at the same time that the thing on the island or the thing wherever they were in a little village mm -hmm. uh, happens. Uh, I do like that they're talking about it being widespread and worldwide, uh, mm -hmm. which is pretty crazy. But what I really want to talk about more so is the levels of, is it possession of 
rage. Like everybody had like a different vibe to them. Like all the all the old people characters, the one guy is just looking for his daughter and gives her, mm -hmm. a, you know, rips out the, the page of the book. Or the one lady who wants to be in a wedding dress, but the one main baddie, he's all about killing everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I'm curious, like how you thought that played out, like semantically, like narratively, that everybody had like a different vibe to them, like, like what they were trying to do as possessed people or were they possessed or was it just a select few uh, i don't know if i would go with possessed um going back to that line that we talked about the lore line yes the lore line where it's well the line where he says um i'd rather be dead mm. to remain to, living to, like to, yeah animal. live like an animal yeah. Um, yeah, yeah oh oh god that got me i had yeah I teared up. See, oh my god! I mean, oh, another film where I get her to cry. Yeah. Fantastic. But it's like, but they they kind of set the premise as like some some vengeful spirit's going to embody mm -hmm. the weak and you know kill people, which we see from the first scene. That old man didn't have a reason to kill that nurse. So there is validity to the fact that they were imbued by some spirit, some vengeful mm -hmm. spirits. But a lot of people just like hung around. They just watched. Um, they did all like barrel into the house and try to rip down the doors. But not everybody was like murderous per se until about halfway through, three quarters through, where they really start tearing at people with shards of glass and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it just was really interesting to me how they set up like who was doing what and why. Um, because what about Ike? Ike was not murderous. Like the others were, he was more like trying to fight it. He was sitting at the piano, he, and he was trying to fight it. Yeah, he he told Noah he, to go away. Exactly, and I, but he's the one that broke the curse. Yeah. Well, did he? He he didn't break the curse he necessarily. Is he's just saved the broke, day? Yeah, first the cycle. Because I I could have sworn it says when someone um helps keep the family together then it's then the spirit or whatever is broken yes but not for everybody just for that individual okay right okay. because it was about but them about the, the songs being sung and the the thing that reminded him of family uh you know spoilers that like there are some things that are being done after everybody else is massacred that and i will tell you there was a scene when they were trying to get into the house when they are just like going at Lucas's leg and mm -hmm. then they all retreat to the, like the den and that all, all the audibles were gone and it was all music. Right. Oh, that whole scene was very extended. I thought it was amazingly done up until the point where I think Laura is trying to get mom's attention again. Just like, it was probably like maybe four or five minutes. It seemed like of just extended silence with just the score, just raging. I thought it was amazing. I think that it was a possession though, but I think that this was like a new a new twist on possession because it did say that these would be your ancestors that mm -hmm. possess you. So I think that that would have a lot to play into it. Like with mm -hmm. both the old men, the grandpa, and then the main bad guy at the very end, spoilers, there's kind of this <laughs> heartfelt moment, you know, yeah, between yeah. that both of them are having. Right, and grandpa right. kind of has that the whole time. So that would make sense that this is an ancestor to him that's looking and being like, okay, well, is my family lineage that bad? Or, <laughs> you know, can we spare them type of situation? Because also they spared the nurse in the house. Like they, they all walk when they came in. Well, and yeah, it's so true. They passed her by. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. In that yeah, one moment, they they gave her an opportunity to spare her and just completely went right by her. So, and I will tell you, her acting like she did not say much in this film. Like the number of lines she has is very short, but like everything that Kim was doing expressively, mm -hmm. I thought was amazing. From her reaction to them dancing, to mm -hmm. seeing the old man in the house, to basically saying she's not my child. She's not my oh, daughter. Yeah. Oh right my god! Right then just, and there, I would have been like, "Okay, bye." <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
just like every, even when she was walking upstairs, just her eyes and her face. I mean, spectacular work, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of just storytelling, like being mm -hmm. able to do it without saying a word, I thought was fantastic. Yes. But now kiddos, cause you know, I love you all. We need to rate this thing. <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. since it was my film, I'm oh. going to go last. So I'm going to go with um, uh, Miss Murder Baby, I Make Her Cry Every Time, oh. Carly Yates, to see what oh. she gives this film. Okay. Um, well, I've, I've got to give it a, a, a solid four, but I'm trying. Oh. <laughs> a solid four. Um, that, that, that knob off of the end of the bed. Pow! Yeah. <laughs> right in the kisser. Oh, that's we're we're almost on the same Bed page. Numbers. I think we're all on the same page because that was pretty much the. But anyway, let's go to Ash. Ash, what did you give this? I, I'm going to go up a little bit more and give this a, a four point five. Ooh, infectious yeah. squishy socks. That's true. <laughs> and I'm going to combine what both of you are doing because again, it was my number one go to, which is I will give it a solid four. Brass bedpost knobs in mm -hmm. Argyle socks. Um, that's where I was going. I had all written down. I was hoping that I should have gone first, by the way. We were uh, so connected. It, I think we all were because I think of everything in the film. One, that was the the moment when things went dark. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was dark before. Yeah. But not in a way where newlyweds and honeymoons are interrupted. Uh, so seeing just him bypass the axe for something more personal yeah oh just yeah, i don't know it's like every i i had to rewind it because uh i was waiting for my girlfriend she came down and we watched it i gave her the whole premise i said okay this is what happens from this point forward and i rewound it i'm like man he every time he passed by the axe in in the the stump it was like i don't know it just it was said so much without saying anything it was like, why would you not go for the obvious weapon? It's like, nope, I'm going to take this thing off the, the post and put it in a sock with my goopy, disgusting, affected feet showing. Mm. Oh, so amazing. It was. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> like, oh, God. Ew, gross. <laughs> the, sound, the sound of it dropping into the sock. Oh. And I was like, oh, it's squished. It's squished. <sighs> it's squished. I loved it. And also, I mean, and, and again, by not saying anything, yeah. even just the the fact that the man prior to this, what condition he was living in, mm -hmm. and even in the, even in the old folks' home, he was the one that was ready to stand up. He stood up when uh, the orderly pushed the woman, and she fell into the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was like he just like rose up, and he seemed to be the one with the most faculty prior to all of this, which probably makes it worse. I mean, it's one thing to be like demented and not even be aware of your surroundings. Um, it does make it excusable, but in fact, like you're not aware of how bad it is. But knowing how bad it is and having to live that way, uh, mm -hmm. no wonder he had the most vengeful spirit of all in him. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah, I he, didn't even think about it that way. And he was fit too. Like he was yeah. all the all the other <laughs> ones. The way that they were coming at people, I was just a little bit like. Okay, let's let's be a little serious, real quick. Um, not sure that that would play out like it did, but then when that guy like stood up and showed and just how how much he still had power behind him, it's like yeah. Well, I'm assuming the spirit gives you a little more oomph, like I, zombies, like you know, some of them were yeah. fast. They, they were, were fast. Yes. They were so fast. That's only because it was Jello like, time. What? So. <laughs> oh my gosh they were those all of those actors and actresses yes. that were in that movie i i would love to see like a behind the scenes interview because you know they had a blast with this movie i bet they had yeah. to have and i just want to say one more thing before we move on is that the 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 image of the old woman in the wedding dress on the swing the tree swing mm -hmm. gorgeous just mm -hmm. gorgeous. Even Judy made comments like, "Wow, that's so such a beautiful shot." Even though it was like blood and like and just gross, but it was just so gorgeously shot. And one other thing I want to say before we move on is uh, how they used the uh, fire extinguisher 
to give you a fog Ooh. effect. <laughs> it's like we don't need fog to magically come in and look spooky. I mean, he they just like set it up. It's like, well, all this stuff is just eventually gonna just dissipate, but for now it looks very foggy in here. So I did like <laughs> how they use real things to have yeah, yeah. non non supernatural effect. But it was, I don't yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say it was beautiful. Different they had a few different moments like that where it was things that were natural that were happening, like when the cars and stuff were on fire. That mm -hmm. whole scene was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gorgeous. But really, more importantly, because I don't know, who is choosing next? Uh-oh, Carly Yates. Yes. All right. What did you decide for us? Um, I, I have decided to watch that we should all watch Before I Wake. Before I wake, it's on Netflix. Okay. Um, I was what I was doing is I was perusing what uh, horror films are on streaming, and I just picked okay, well Netflix, and it come up with like the top thirty Ooh, horror yeah. films to watch, and it's right up there. It's at number right. two. All I right. said okay. And number one was old people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if this. I'm. I'm surprised now that this isn't one of the trending movies because it, it's really good. Like if squid games can trend, like why can't this? Mm -hmm. one? It, it was a sleeper. It was not unlike dark or uh, 1899, you know, also German films. Uh, or were they Norwegian? I don't remember, but they were foreign films and they got play, but not like squid games. Squid games was just ignited. Yeah, um, like the the imagination of people, while the other one's just like you get a good cult following, but just not where it is right now. Number one on Netflix is the Pope's Exorcist with Russell oh. Crowe, so that one I'm looking forward to as well. But I will watch before I wake because you know I don't sleep anyway. So I wasn't <laughs> I'm excited. I don't think I've seen that one. I don't think I have. I no, say I don't think so either. <laughs> Until I start watching the movie, and I'm like, no, I've seen it. Yeah. Oh, that one, yeah, yeah. Because I'm so bad with titles, but either way, I love very well. Now, in the description, it does say horror, so by God, <laughs> it better be a horror film, or I'm going to be upset. Hey, they got me too with what was it? The the phone, the Stephen King movie that we all oh, watched. Oh, the Mr. We Hargan's like, phone. Yeah, yeah we were yeah. like. Well, I mean, it was horror-ish. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's all I'm going to give you on that. I was not taken. If you recall, I was not taken by that movie all that long. Yeah, yeah. No, But I, I still agree. love you. But I still love you. <laughs> and I love so, all you all. We'll forgive oh, you if it's horror-ish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can't be all in straight and narrow like horror all the time. You know, it's got, we got to have diversity. We do. Uh, then thrillers count. If it makes me like afraid to go to sleep, then I That's think that true. will accomplish quite a lot. That's true. So hopefully next week we have Brooke back. Um, she had some technical difficulties today, so that barred her from joining. Yes. But uh, hopefully next week we'll have a quartet back. And I'm just sending love to all you all as we mm -hmm. close down. Mwah, 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 mwah. And uh, with that, I will take you off screen. Be gone! And with that, thank you again for joining us on another Sunday night. And remember, we'll scare you later. <laughs>